introduce myself. My name is uh, Monisha Harrell, and I've been serving as the campaign manager for Bruce for Seattle. It is with great anger and sadness uh, that I'm with you here today. Having worked uh, and run a number of campaigns, the ad released by Lorena for Seattle campaign a few days ago is one of the most uh, egregious that I have seen uh, in Seattle politics. This ad is not just racially insensitive or racially charged, it is racist and it is harmful to the black community. And it's maddening because it calls to mind the centuries of black men that we have lost to violence in the names of white women. <clears throat> if alive, Emmett Till would have been 81 years old today. And we know that although we could let something like this go unchecked, this is not about this campaign. This is not about this race. This is about protecting and standing up for our black community. Frankly, no press reached out to ask us about this ad and drawing attention to it may not have been politically convenient, but it is the right thing to do. This ad has created real hurt in the black community and it has real implications for the voters who will see it. And we cannot let this kind of racism go in a city like Seattle in the year 2021. It is time to stand up for the violence against our community perpetuated in these racist tropes. And we are calling on Lorena for Seattle to take this ad down. There is a letter that was released with the names of many of the leaders you will see here today, but please hear them because there is real hurt and pain that they have caused in trying to win a political campaign. With that, I'm gonna pass it on to Bruce Harrell. Thank you, Monisha, and thank you to members of the press for participating in this press event this afternoon. What's probably the most important voice is not mine in this, in this hour. I think the most important voice would be the voice of leaders in our community who have fought to support survivors and victims of sexual violence, who fought for the Black community. Um, it is crystal clear with a an election just 10 or 11 days from now that my opponent is politicizing the victims of sexual violence. That's just wrong any way you slice it. And Seattle is better than that. Seattle deserves better than that. For the first time in our history, in our city's history, the voters decided to advance two people of color to the primary, past the primary to the general election. That is history in and of itself. I'm uh, as many of you know, my leadership style is one to create motivation and inspiration and hope um, to be better for everybody. And this recent attack ad um, was just wrong. And you're going to hear from some of the most courageous and outstanding leaders to talk about that and how it affected their particular community. It was more than a dog whistle. It was blatant. And as Monisha Harold stated, effect, affected hundreds, if not thousands of people. And our campaign has been contacted by so many people. Uh, we released a letter just signed by approximately 40 people, but there are likely 400 or 500 people who would like to sign on. Um, it, it, within the last hour, uh, our campaign line has been ringing off the hook. So having said that, uh, Monisha, I'll let you sort of run the show, but this kind of politicizing of victims of sexual violence, there's no place in this race for it. This issue is only surfacing because we have what seems to be a candidate desperate to be the next mayor of Seattle. And 
That is not how we are running our campaign, and we will stay on message on the matters that have surfaced in almost eight months of campaigning. Monisha, I'll give it back to you. Thank you. We're going to take this in a couple of different levels. We're going to first just address the facts of the ad. Um, and I want to introduce Lincoln Beauregard, uh, who was an attorney uh, who brought the, the um, charges against uh, then Mayor Ed Murray. Lincoln, thank you so much for joining us today. And, and I just want to invite you to share um, from your experiences. I don't need to You're on mute, Lincoln. Hard to do a press conference that way. I'll, I'll try to be brief, everybody. Uh, one of the reasons I felt it was important to participate in this uh, press conference today is because I uh, worked in the halls of the same law firm as Lorena, where she claimed to focus on civil rights. I sat on a board with Lorena uh, of an organization wherein we claimed to champion civil rights, separate and apart from the firm we worked at together. Uh, we're supposed to dedicate our lives to fighting for victims and fighting for uh, uh, people who uh, are underprivileged. And the thing that resonated with me when I saw that ad first was that uh, it's sending a message. It's sending a message that the organizations with which we used to be affiliated or she used to be affiliated uh, is entirely inconsistent with what we stand for. It is wrong. And everyone will see that ad differently, but I'll tell you as a black man, the first thing that I saw was the impression and the imagery to falsely portray Bruce Hare and to use inflammatory rhetoric when doing so. The other thing that I wanna point out and I'll be done is that the representations in relation to the Ed Murray litigation are unfair and certainly incomplete. I've been involved in a lot of litigation with the city of Seattle. I've seen the truth. And one of the truths that Lorraine is not telling anybody in those ads is that while she spoke up and she claims to have spoke up in public about certain things that were going on then, I've seen through litigation the background. And in the background, what she was telling her staff and telling everybody else is, don't touch this. Don't touch this. And what some of her exact words amongst her staff and text messages in relation to the Ed Murray matter were, I'm not carrying this torch. So what you have is somebody who's running for office who will tell you who she's fighting for, but in the background, it's just spin. The person you should be voting for, if you're listening to anybody in the public, is Bruce Harrell, because at least he's speaking the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. There's another thing that was brought up in that ad, and we just were going to start by addressing the facts. Um, I want to introduce Ms. Elma Horton, a... Uh, a senior leader in our community, always actually a leader in the black community who served on the board um, of camp for over 20 years and um, certainly can address the question of um, Bruce's involvement with camp as a, as a lawyer. Uh, Ms. Horton, I wanna thank you for joining us today and I'm gonna turn it over to you. Good evening, I'm happy to be here, but I'm very sad that I have to be here to fight for somebody running for office because of the things being said that's not true. It's sad to note in 10 days we have a mayor, but honesty, dignity, and integrity is not being upheld. And that's, that's hard for, for me. I've been in Seattle for 60 years. I appear, my name appears on the cornerstone of the New Hope Baptist Church where I served for 31 years. If anybody wanna know who I am, just Google my name because my name is all over my community because I love my community. I was on camps board for 20 years. I served at New Hope Church, um, the first black church that was uh, built from the ground the architect was uh, Benjamin McAdoo. Then I later joined Mount Zion because I was working so diligent with the schools of Reverend McKinney and they was having two services and a morning service appeared to me. And from Mount Zion, um, I have just been tired of working. 
I had an opportunity in this community to meet Dr. King when he came here to um, fight for fair housing. Reverend McKinney introduced him to me. I was on my way to work and I met him going in the home of good barbecue. And that was something that I would never forget. That was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I just really, really appreciated. And I've always been involved in whatever's going on in my community. I was on a Century of Motivation program, like I said, for 20 years. Um, when I retired, received a beautiful plaque uh, from the Century of Motivation program, for my service that I rendered. Uh, I had, during my stay uh, with Center Area, we partnered with Mount Sign for the Day of Karen and, and just did everything we could to nurture our community, help our community. And 2001 to 2002, somewhere about then, I remember the board asked um, Attorney Bruce Harold to come and help Camp's board discuss an issue that came up a complaint uh, from an, a senior employee and the director at that, that time was Mr. Williams who later passed on. Um, the complaint uh, had to do with something that may, he might have said that was misunderstood and was considered as sexual harassment or misconduct. It was something an employee said to Mr. Williams. So he said, and Mr. Williams is not here to defend himself. So I'm here today to say Mr. Williams was a respectful, honorable man. And I didn't believe that at that time that anybody, um, that he had approached anybody in a unprofessional way. So we invited Mr. Harrell to come and talk to the board, Mr. Harrell, um, said that we should investigate the situation uh, and interview any employee who had made complaints. Um, and if we are comfortable, not comfortable in doing that, hire somebody. He never said one time anything about the complaint or suggest that we discredit anybody or ignore the complaint. He encouraged us to do what was professionally right. As a mother, I have two daughters. I would never encourage any unprofessional act from a male to be ignored. And I know I was sitting on the board and I, and I know that that didn't happen. I was on the board with Lola. Peters was on the board at the same time I was. And everybody that was on there, but I don't think anybody would be dishonest enough to um, falsely make the statements or uphold the statements that are being made because it's just not right. It's not true, it's not right, and it's disgraceful. I've known Mr. Harrell since he was in fifth grade. His mother was a president of PTA in elementary school, and I know how he was brought up. I know he's not perfect, but I know he's a man of integrity. He's a man to stand by his word. And I believe he would be good for Seattle. I know he's not dishonest. He's worked with us in Mount Zion. He's worked all over the community and he's an honest man. And I am really saddened by somebody putting a commercial on television to go to thousands of people that they know it's false. And I'm sad. And I want you to know I'm sad. And I want Seattle to know I'm sad. Because Black people, we've suffered too much. And we don't need this. And to have a mayor to clean up this mess that we're in, we don't have to fight like this. We have to be fair and put the best person in for the job and clean up this city. And I pray that see, this election will be fair. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Horton. I, uh, I next wanna uh, turn to Ms. Paula Sardinius. Paula has worked with um, uh, survivors. Um, she has had family members who have been survivors um, and has been a great voice uh, in this work. 
uh, on many different levels, including the statewide level. Paula, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thank you, Manisha. This is an extremely difficult conversation. Um, I have worked with over 50 families in Eastern Washington and King County, but this is personal for me. Um, in 2016, as many of you know, including M. Lorena Gonzalez, my daughter was 16 years old when she was traveling to Princeton to represent Washington State in a women's leadership program. She identifies as Black and Latina when she was sexually assaulted. And we take sexual assault very, very seriously. She became one of two victims in 2016 to have her assault set successfully prosecuted. When I saw her video, the more than 50 families that we work with reached out to me and they have a very strong message that they wanted me to deliver today. Sexual assault should not be trivialized. It should not be politicized. It has no place in this election. To have it trivialized and trafficked as a trope by someone that my daughter looks like, somebody that she thought should advocate for her has been deeply hurtful. When our family went through this extremely difficult time, there were many people that reached out to our family. There were many people that advocated for our family. One of those people was Bruce Harrell. So we want the public to understand that this is the worst type of political advertisement. This is the worst type of trope. It sets back all of the work that victims have to go through when they use their courage, when they advocate, when they come forward. A 16 year old woman who is now a 21 year old college student saw that video and it has given her post-traumatic stress disorder. She cannot believe that a woman would do this in order to win a race. Mm -hmm. So I am speaking up for not just my daughter, but for all women who are courageous survivors. And I am asking M. Lorena Gonzalez to have some decency and some integrity and to take that video down. And I am saying to her, there is no place in our politics, in our society for that type of anti-Blackness. It does a disservice to the families. It does a disservice to the victims. And I want you to hear the pain of those victims in my voice. You have hurt us. I want to publicly thank Bruce for the support over the past five years that he has given to our family, that he has given to victims never seeking recognition for himself. This ad has been extremely hurtful. It has been extremely harmful. And there is no place in Seattle or in any politics for this type of racist, anti-Black trope. Monisha, thank you. Thank you, Paula. Um, I next wanna uh, pass it to uh, Mr. James Bible. Uh, James has been, um, has been a strong voice in uh, police accountability and in, in working uh, for those who need a voice and who need support. James, I just, uh, I, will, I will open the floor to you now. I've known Bruce since I was seven years old. I'll tell you this, uh, there is a short distance between either being a lawyer or a gang member on a street corner or in prison or dead or a gra college graduate. When I first met Bruce, I was seven years old. Uh, my mom had me at 17, went to a community college and then found her way to the University of Washington on so, snow days, uh, she had to take me with her. There were times when I sat right next to Bruce and other UW football players and I started to learn that the destiny of black people and black men specifically was not necessarily that they had to go to jail or prison, that they could actually go to college. I'll never forget driving home with my mom one day, listening to the radio, hearing that Bruce Harrell had been drafted to an NFL team, but that he was making the decision to be a lawyer instead. It forever impacted me. And it wasn't just when I was seven that Bruce was a friend and a mentor uh, and a figure in my life. It's been throughout my life uh, that he's been present uh, for a kind word, uh, sometimes a redirection, sometimes a disagreement, 
uh, but it's always been heartfelt. I've also known Lorena. I've known, known her for other, over 20 years. We were law students together and she was a friend. So in this race, I chose to step away. I chose to step away because I was in this spot where I had my longtime mentor who I'll forever respect um, going up against my uh, law school friend. I wanted both of them to do well. I wanted their campaigns to be honorable. Lorena asked me for $500 and I gave it to her. I never gave it to Bruce because Bruce didn't ask, but I would have given it to him too. And that wasn't an endorsement of her. It absolutely broke my heart when I walked out of a courtroom yesterday and received an email from Lorena's campaign saying that on some level, Bruce Harrell, the man I know to support as many people as possible that are having difficult times, doesn't support people that are victims of sex abuse. I knew it wasn't true. I knew my, <laughs> I felt my heart sank. I knew that I was in a spot where I had to make some sort of decision uh, to undo something that I had done in terms of having given Lorena $500. And I can concretely say that please don't do that with my money, Lorena, not with the money that I gave you. And I know that on some level, it's part of it. I want those $500 back. I want honorable campaigns. I want an apology to Bruce Harrell because that's the, not the sort of campaign that we need in the city of Seattle. Talk about your ideas if you want to, talk about your beliefs, talk about how you'll improve Seattle, but don't do damage to relationships between communities of color, which you have in fact done. Don't weaponize race in such a way that we adversely impact one another and can't grow together. When you're deciding whether or not you can be mayor or a leader of people, you have to assess whether or not you can make tough decisions to the benefit of everybody. And where will you go? Will you, uh, will you find yourself in a race to the bottom in terms of how you treat others and what you're willing to sacrifice? Or will you help us all build? We didn't build yesterday when that ad was la launched. We didn't improve yesterday because of that ad. That ad was heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, and something has to be said. And of all the people that are probably on this, in this press conference right now, Lorena, I actually believed in you. And I believe that you would not put me in this spot, but you did. It's time to step away, back down, do what you need to do in terms of apologizing, in terms of telling whoever it is that advised you that you need to head in a different direction. But this was just wrong and will have a, a, a long-term ripple effect on our respective communities, on our respective communities. So we have a leader here in Bruce who hasn't stooped to that level. And Lorena, you just demonstrated that you would do anything to win. Right. And that's why we have to step in a different direction. And that's why uh, it's now time to, to move in a different direction, even knowing uh, that both of them were my friends. Thank you, James. Uh, and thank you for all the work that you have done in community. Mm -hmm. You have uh, done some amazing, amazing work and represented um, some families have truly needed a voice. So thank you for that. I next want to uh, introduce uh, Reverend uh, Harriet Walden. Uh, Reverend Walden has been a longtime leader uh, within this community, working on behalf of families and particularly mothers who have lost their children. And uh, Reverend Walden, I just want to pass it over to you. Thank you very much. I uh, thank you. I've been in Seattle 45 years, been doing mothers for 31 years. I want to just call Lorena out. I mean, I mean, this is just really uh, what she's done is really crossed the line. It shows a lack of leadership. The same lack of leadership last year when she defunded the police department and and actually being president of council. She did she did damage to Seattle, and now she's trying to do damage again. And uh, this is what she's doing about uh, traumatizing re-traumatizing uh, victims of, of sexual assault 
and then bringing up race and uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and all of this stuff to actually make Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Harold to actually actually like be somebody that people need to be afraid of. You know, we're tired of this, Lorena. We have survived this for long, for, gen for centuries and generations. And now here you come, a new kid on the block that don't have enough dignity to run a, a decent campaign. We are asking to take this, uh, to give an apology, number one, and also to take, to take that, uh, take it down. It's time to stand up and do the right thing. And this is, I mean, this is about leadership. Leadership is important. Leaders know how to say, I'm sorry, and I made a mistake. So now this is, this is a standard. If this is the standard of your leadership, Seattle people take heart. We don't need this kind of leader. Take it down, Lorena. Your anti-blackness is showing all the way from last summer. We haven't forgotten Carmen Best. You were part of that. You didn't shut that down. You continued to run with it. And so now we're, we're asking to take it down and, uh, and, and to actually apologize. Be a good leader. Because right now you, you are acting like you're not, you're not worthy of people's voting for you, uh, Lorena, at all. And uh, all the people out there who was on the fence, you see how Seattle is today? And you see how it is today? It, you could all blame it on Lorena. She's the problem. She did that. And I uh, thank you uh, for letting me speak. Take it down, take it down, and apologize. Take it down, take it down, and apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Walden. I want to close uh, with Gerald Hankerson. Um, Gerald has a very long history um, with the challenges of, of justice and particularly with uh, a background that sometimes you just fit the description, I suppose. Gerald, you have been, uh, you have taken all that life has given you and you have, uh, you have maximized your opportunities uh, when presented and, and you've had a, a tough hand but really you show up, you show up in a big way. And I just want to thank you for that, um, Gerald. Thank you, for Monisha, for that introduction. And first of all, let me just say, you know, the fact that I'm on the call with all of you and experienced this pain, it remind me of what my grandmother and mother went through to allow me to be in this space today as head of the NAACP. But I can tell you yesterday when I saw that email come through in that ad, I was not only shocked, I can't say I was surprised, but I was disgusted. I remember being proud just a couple of months ago thinking that, okay, Seattle is primarily moving in a good direction because we got two candidates of color running for the most powerful office in the city of Seattle. And obviously Bruce is my friend, he's my brother. I obviously feel that he's a strong candidate, but that ad was absolutely disgraceful. It was a disrespect to the entire black community. It was disrespectful to every single survivor that's still struggling to today through their pain. It should be disrespectful to her own community of immigrants that have grown up to live this life. But the amount of calls and the disrespect that we, I mean, the, the people that say what they saw, this was nothing more than a Willie Horton attempt, an ad that was used to misguide people to make them think that Bruce Harrell, a black man, a man of color, can't be trusted. He's just like all the other black criminals. So you don't want to vote for him. You want to vote for us. Some people call it a dog whistle. I call it typical Seattle. This is typically out of a Republican playbook that I'm not surprised that her consultants probably from the Donald Trump's camp. But this damage for me cannot be undone with a simple apology. I actually think she should resign because she should be disqualified running for a dignified officer to be the leader of the people to dismiss Seattle in a way that uses race and to weaponize it, to make white people afraid to vote for black people. She clearly didn't hear it, learn anything from the George Floyd. She clearly didn't hear learn anything from last year when our people took over the streets and the community and rocked Seattle to make them see race. And it was just two months ago that Kathy Lambert did the same exact thing. Make me wonder, do they have the same consultant? But I don't think anyone that uses these kind of racist tactics should ever be allowed to hold an office 
with dignity and honor because she lost that yesterday. And I'm calling on all leaders in Seattle, not just the black ones. I'm even calling on the survivors to stand up, call her out and let her know you do not deserve, not just to hold the Seattle's office for mayor, you don't deserve to hold any office in our neighborhood. And that breaks my heart after so many years of trying to heal the relationship between black and brown people, she threw a grenade in our neighborhood that harmed us all while saying I was just only trying to get him. No, you hurt me too. You hurt all of us. And it won't be just a simple apology that you owe Bruce Harrell. You owe the entire black community an apology. And the only apology that I would be willing to accept that she resigned and say that she should no longer run for office until she fix herself, because this is the kind of stuff that allows Seattle to become the most horrible city when it should be the best city, particularly when it comes to black and brown people. We're supposed to stick together. We're supposed to come together. We're supposed to unite. But the devices that come across from Lorena have proved to me and everybody else, she don't qualify to be the leadership whether it be city council, city mayor, or even the state level. I was so disgusted. And I'm sure Emmett Till today is rolling over in his grave that this thing existed in 2021 when we thought we have gained momentum to trying to get to a place of fairness. Lorena, not only she should move that, take down that ad and remove it, you obviously owe not only Bruce an apology, you owe the survivors an apology, but you owe the entire community an apology and the only thing I'm willing to accept, nothing short of her stepping aside because she don't deserve to be the leader of Seattle. Bruce is clearly the right and the only candidate for me in this race moving forward. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity, Monisha. Thank you, Gerald. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna end uh, this conference uh, with that. I just want to say a few things. This is not about a political race. That is not why we called you here today. This is about the deep pain inflicted on the black community. This is anti-blackness in its ugliest form. And this pain will not go away with the removal of just one ad. As Gerald said, this grenade has been launched. This is something that you are now placing in the hearts of the black community in Seattle. This is not a moment we will forget. This is not imagery that we can erase. And when you leave this press conference, we will carry this with us because that is the burden that you have now placed upon us. You will all see the letter authored by this community directed to Lorena's campaign to please remove that ad. We ask you understand the pain that has gone into having to write that letter and having to live with the after effects and the ripples that will stay with us. Thank you for joining us today. It is not easy to bear our pain in this manner, but we do it for the advancement of our community. And with that, uh, I will close this conference. Thank you very much.